So today we're going to uh, go over Lori Hill's journey of having a facelift done and uh, her decision to do that as well as the post-operative uh, consequences and swelling that uh, of course are part of the procedure. Previously I have uh, I've uh, discussed her eyelid journey following her eyelid blepharoplasty and I've gotten a lot of good feedback uh, following that uh, video but this one we can start to see the emotional impact it has on the patient uh, what the kinds of things to expect, like the swelling and the distortion, and then, of course, ultimately, uh, her great outcome. And so if you watch the beginning to the end of this video, you'll see the evolution of her experience of having a facelift. Hi, guys. It's recovery day number two, and I'm doing okay. I'm still sleeping off and on all day long. Um, the pain is probably at around a 3 out of a 10. It's not too bad. I still feel really tired and groggy, and I just want to lay around all day and not do anything. So, uh, as you can see, she has pain 3 out of 10, which is not that bad. Uh, so, following a facelift, you don't expect to have severe pain. If you have a lot of severe pain, that may indicate that you have a uh, hematoma or some other issue that's going on, like an infection. So typically, the patient has mild to moderate pain, which can be controlled in most cases with extra strength Tylenol. Sometimes extra strength Tylenol mixed with a little bit of codeine can help. But in general, they're very comfortable. She has, uh, you know, she's laying around. She feels a little uh, worn out. Yeah, she's gone through a long procedure. It's probably a five to eight hour procedure. Uh, she has drains in her neck. Uh, which, are, of course, drains away any of the blood-tinged fluid from her neck and, and from her face. And that's good because that decreases the amount of swelling uh, that can occur from that fluid. And also, she has, some, she has significant swelling of her face, which, of course, is part and parcel of having a facelift along with fat grafting of her face. So this is part and parcel of a facelift experience, and this is normal swelling that is to be expected following a full face neck lift and face lift and fat grafting. So everybody should take note that this is normal and not get anxious if this occurs following your face lift. I'm just laying around watching movies. I'll see you guys for tomorrow's check-in. Bye. Hi guys. My voice sounds really funny and it's really hard to move my face still. I really shouldn't be talking a lot, but I can't get over how growly my voice sounds. My face looks really weird. It's not just from the facelift. They also did fat grafting, but I'm not in pain. It just feels tight. So again, uh, she feels tight. She's not in pain on the day three. Uh, some of the swelling is starting to subside. I see that she also had a uh, what appears to be a lip lift at the same time of the procedure. So she's going to have additional swelling of her upper lip and uh, all of this is going to dissipate over several days to weeks. And then other things I'm feeling, I guess I'm starting to get some of that like weird surgery doubt. It's really normal, but you know, I kind of get this weirdness like what do people think of me? What do even my close relatives think of me? So everybody has this sense of doubt or I would say not everybody, but many people experience a little bit of depression and when my patients come in they may get a little depressed a few days later saying wow I, my face looks distorted i'm swollen i look weird and you know uh, this is all normal reactions to undergoing a major procedure and so uh, again these experiences are all to be expected you will get a little depressed commonly following a facelift procedure like this and maybe the anesthesia also contributes a little bit to the depression as well. You know, that sort of thought process, if you've had that, or, if, you know, I want you to know it's totally normal. And, you know, you guys are probably worried about my speech right now. My speech is like this because of the fat grafting. Let me give you a view of my face. I'm not supposed to turn. So I'm going to do this so you can see it. Okay. 
um, as far as I'm not supposed to be looking anywhere but straight ahead. I'm not supposed to look down. So somebody would have to get my food for me. You really have no peripheral or downward or upward vision. You're not allowed to do that. So ideally, the patient shouldn't crank their neck around like this, up and down, side to side, following surgery, because there are sutures in there. We want those uh, sutures to stay in place. We don't want them to pull out. We want everything to stay exactly where we put them. And that's a common instruction not to cr crank your neck up and down, side to side. And uh, so she's following the directions. And it's important that uh, you as a patient should follow directions following these procedures because we've been through this experience with patients. We've seen what could happen if they don't follow directions. And therefore, we want to reemphasize that follow along exactly with your postoperative plan and you'll come out uh, usually uh, much better than if you try to deviate from that. It's really hard. I'm in San Francisco. My family's back in Las Vegas. My husband went back to work. So I have my mother-in-law generously helping out. But it's still really lonely. I miss my son. I miss my you know, husband. So emotionally it's hard. It's also boring. Nothing's really going on. I've been watching Friends reruns. And that's honestly been the highlight of things. Like, I don't like watching anything depressing or sad on TV. And I've just been trying to sleep the majority of the time. And that's a good piece of advice. Just take it easy. Don't try to do too much. Don't try to accomplish too much. Recognize you just have to lay low for a couple days and every day will get better. One foot in front of the other and you'll get progressively improved over several days. Okay guys, I'll see you for tomorrow's check-in. I woke up, I was really swollen. I could tell I was really swollen even before I looked in the mirror. And this eye was almost completely swollen shut. I just felt like a monster. I know it looked like a monster. I was, I was thinking like I should just go to the emergency room. So it's important to recognize that you can get asymmetric swelling. Asymmetric swelling is a common occurrence following procedures because both sides of your face may not react exactly the same to the surgery. Some, sometimes there's more swelling as a result of the uh, trauma of doing the surgery itself. So, or maybe they put a little more fat on one side than the other to, to compensate for some loss of volume on one side. So nothing, you don't get panicked in these cases. These are these cases usually run very smoothly and far far and away the majority of patients. So I'm just putting up with it. I've been trying to sleep. I'm honestly like having, you know, negative thoughts. Obviously, I'm feeling like, why did I even do this? What's it gonna look like? I'm just really, I'm not at my best, I guess you could say. So I've just been trying to sleep the day away in this hotel room. Thank God I have my mother-in-law with me. She's helping me. Anyways, here's a front view and a side view. So she brings up a good point. Uh, Lori Hill, she says that her mother-in-law's with her. You always have to have someone, uh, some partner or, or a family member with you during this post-operative period. You can't do it alone. You can't go it alone. It's too hard. Somebody has to get up. They may have to help you to the bathroom. They may have to f give you some food to eat. Um, so, and just give you the reassurance everything is okay. And of course, if there's anything that arises that is a little strange or weird, that person can notify the, the surgeon and, and explain what's going on so that they can give you feedback on whether or not it's a normal occurrence or not. And we're here to get my drains out. And I feel like the last 24 hours have gone so slowly. I can't wait for these drains to come out. I feel like I can feel them in my neck. <sighs> so it's very important in, in Lori Hill's case, she probably had a deep neck uh, lift and she has drains in for five days, not one day or two days, but five days because they want to drain away any of the fluid that can collect down in the neck. Otherwise, you get like this dense, uh, woody feeling on your neck. And so it's important to recognize that we keep those drains in for five full days to make sure there's no more fluid coming out of the drain of the little uh, tubes. 
So uh, it can be a long period of time when you have those drains and you can, it can be very unnerving to have those drains in, but in the end, it helps and it accelerates the healing process. Anyways, I think I'm just really tired from last night. Um, I'll see you guys in a minute at the appointment. So same thing, I'm just gonna release the suction first, like that. I'll let you know when to take a nice, slow, deep breath in, okay? Okay. So, nice, slow, deep breath in. And that's the drain. That was nothing. Yep. <laughs> that was easy. I'll turn it off, Lori. Yeah, thank you. Hi, guys. So it's now the evening of getting my drains out and I do feel a lot better. I feel more of, um, I feel less tension on my neck and less tension on my jaw. And it looks like my swelling is starting to come down a little bit. Um, I know my eyes look super weird still, but I am able to do more things. I'm actually able to work on a video and edit it. My mother-in-law who's been helping me has been able to run out and not have to watch me all the time. Um, I do feel like if I drop something, I can gently pick it up. So I'm not completely helpless. I am eating more solid foods now too. The pain is completely not there now. I haven't had to take a painkiller since this morning, so that's a really good sign. My spirits are pretty high. I am a little tired, though. Anyways, so I will check back with you again tomorrow. See you guys then. Bye. Hi, guys. So it's recovery day six, and I definitely feel like I turned a corner. Um, I feel like I'm able to do more things for myself, like warm up things and I'm being careful not to bend down, but I am doing more things like I was able to go shopping for stuff that I forgot um, to bring with me. I've only been taking extra strength Tylenol and Motrin. I'm definitely really, really swollen. I'm still really bruised. Let me show you my side. This is day six, and this is what I typically see in my patients as well. By the sixth or seventh day, the, the swelling has starting to dissipate. It's not gone, but it's it, the inflated uh, appearance starts to decrease and uh, she starts to feel much more comfortable and uh, the need for any uh, pain medication, whether it's Tylenol or extra strength Tylenol or, or mild narcotic, it, it dissipates entirely and uh, they get along fine with just plain Tylenol in most cases or nothing. Front side. The areas they took fat from were hurting for a few days, but now with it being recovery day six, I think for the most part that's gone away too. My mouth muscles are still kind of weird, and I'm definitely conscientious of like what expressions I'm making. It's like pretty much my face is still not very mobile. Okay, guys, I will see you tomorrow. So the donor sites where we obtain fat are usually around the belly or the hip or the inner thigh, inner portion of her uh, medial thigh. And um, those areas usually heal very quickly. Uh, they usually cause minimal uh, discomfort and it's not an issue at all. So she just uh, reconfirms that, that getting uh, fat from the abdomen or from the the hip is uh, very comfortable and really doesn't cause much discomfort at all following this procedure. Hi guys, it's recovery day seven and I feel a lot better. I just got the rest of the stitches out of my head and on my neck and she really cleaned up the whole area. And they also took the stitches out of my body from where they harvested fat from. So that feels a lot better. I do feel a little bit Better. I feel more alive today and I still need a little bit of help getting my food together, um, getting into position into bed, but this would be the day that I recommend if you only had someone stay seven days with you, then that would probably be okay if they left today on the seventh day. So she had a sutures removed the seven days, which is what I do. I take out the sutures after a week around the ears. Uh, sometimes there are a few staples I put in the uh, in the scalp region. They also come out at seven days, 
and um, and under the chin, of course, those those sutures come out also uh, between five and seven days. And then I put a little compression uh, dressing under the chin to make sure that uh, the area uh, heals well. Uh, then following that, you just put on uh, plain Vaseline over the uh, suture area and you keep it clean. And you, and you continue to do that until there's no more crusting or any blood accumulating in that area. So you always want to keep it pristine clean. You have to uh, wash or rinse these areas off with uh, mild soap pat dry them and then apply some ointment around this region. I'm eating solid food. I don't really have pain, but I have achiness when I wake up. I take an extra strength Tylenol for the achiness. It is a little bit harder to sleep through the night. I do wake up like after three or four hours and then I have to make myself go back to bed. And I don't know if that's just me. So let me give you guys the front view and the side. And then the other side. All is very hard to see that anything is done. Um, in your pre-op pictures, your neck is more oblique and there's more fullness on the side. Now we have this great shadow and contour. And as the mm -hmm. swelling you know, goes down, that'll get better. Um, but we've, we've tucked the scar um, against um, the, the little sideburn area here, you can see it's already hard to see. And here we've tucked it into the groove right where the ear and cheek come together. And, and then we've taken it inside the uh, little part of the ear here to hide it. This is the approach that I take uh, in terms of making incisions and how I plan my incisions. So I, I make an incision right below the hair tuft. Sometimes I come in front of the hair tuft a little bit if I have to. I don't like to go way up into the hairline as some other doctors do uh, because I'm afraid the incision is going to show in that area. And then I come up and around and down and I, I make the incision behind the, the little structure called the tragus over here. And uh, that hides the incision uh, behind this little uh, structure so that you don't have a, a vertical line going down, which is very obvious. In addition, I also uh, place a plication suture in the front of the ear to create a little depression in this area, which is a natural uh, feature of, of a non-operated on uh, face, so that we get a little depression in front of the ear and, um, and then the, this skin is draped over and, this, and the incision is continued down in front of the earlobe, behind the earlobe, up and across uh, along the hairline. So that in the end, uh, you can wear your hair back if you have to, and there's a very little uh, telltale sign of surgery. Um, but it takes several months before those incisions um, you know, mature and those incisions, incision lines fade. But very often, People are um, very pleased with the, the way it looks afterwards. Uh, I have seen other patients where the incision was done in front of the ear to cut, uh, cut down on the time it takes to uh, sculpt this area. And when they do that, uh, unfortunately, in, particularly in women, if you see that line, it's a dead giveaway you had a facelift. Uh, most people don't want to have a, uh, a obvious stigmata of having a facelift. They want it to look refreshed, but they don't want to look like they had an operation. In future videos, I'm going to discuss how I correct complications of, an, of incisions that were made improperly around the ear and scars that occur around the ear and sometimes how the earlobe is pulled down and how I correct those problems. By the time that we flew home Sunday, I was no longer on pain medicine and I was feeling a lot better. I didn't look normal, but I was feeling a lot better. And I was able to drive once I got home. The only thing is it still felt really strange to turn my neck to the side. Now the stiffness in my neck lasted about three weeks. After about two and a half weeks, I looked pretty presentable. For example, I did this Q&A video for you guys at about two and a half weeks post-surgery. And I thought I looked pretty swollen. And if you didn't know me before, you probably wouldn't think that I looked really swollen. It took about two months before I looked presentable enough to be photographed. And I would say it's going on three months 
and I'm just starting to feel like myself. So it's definitely a longer recovery. And part of the reason it's a long recovery is because of the fat grafting that was done. I agree with Lori Hill. It takes several months before everything settles down. And fat grafting can take up to a year before we really see, a year or more sometimes, before we really see the final result. Because sometimes some of the fat actually dissipates over time and then comes back to a little, to a greater extent. So uh, it takes quite a while and she's uh, come to the conclusion that I think she was a little surprised how long it took to recover. And I think it's very important to, to uh, take that message home that everybody's in a rush. You want a result tomorrow, but it takes time. You got to be patient. And I, this is the exact experience I've had with many of my patients where initially they may look swollen. They're very concerned. They're very anxious. They may even get a little depressed, but over time they get better and better and better. And then eventually they, everything kind of quiets down and they look uh, normal and good. Here's a photo of my neck lift scar. It's under my chin and it's pretty much hidden. You guys asked me for a before and after photo. I'm gonna show some here, but I wanna caution you that these are not accurate before and afters because the after is only three months afterwards and not the required year. So it should be considered an in-progress photo. Second, since the after was not taken at Dr. Martin's office, it will not have the same lighting, head position, or eye position. Please take careful note of that and don't comment that the lighting or anything else is different because I've addressed it. Thanks. As you can see, even though it's at three months, and yes, it may take a full year before everything kind of settles down completely, you can see clearly that she has much better contours of her jawline, her, her, her overall shape of her face is, is more oval, uh, she has a softness to her cheeks uh, from the fat grafting, and her temples are filled in with fat as well, uh, which uh, also um, improves the overall contour of her face. On the side view, we can see clearly that she has a sharp um, uh, contour, uh, kind of a 90 degree contour from her jawline to her neck, uh, which she didn't have before surgery. Uh, so overall, she's had a rejuvenation, a more youthful appearance, and an excellent outcome uh, to this uh, very uh, meticul meticulously done, performed surgery. This is another great video that Lori Hill put out in, in terms of her cosmetic journeys. Um, and I believe it's very informative to patients who are considering having facelifts. I do facelifts very frequently, and this is a video that I think is very beneficial for my patients to watch. And if you have any further questions, please leave them below. I'm happy to answer your questions. Uh, please subscribe to my channel and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.